The two things that grab people's attention when they're checking out CPUs are the clock speeds and the core counts. It's easy to see why, they're very quantifiable, and seeing how the latest generation of gaming CPUs has completely abandoned dual core models, we're left with this question. Are dual cores really that bad for gaming, and is it still worth getting one? This is especially relevant for people who are putting together a budget PC and want to know where they can cut costs without suffering big performance dips. So if you're one of these people, or you're just interested interested to see how well dual core CPUs stack up in the gaming world nowadays, then stick around to find out. First things first, let's go over some of the things that you should keep in mind when getting any CPU. We feel that we have to say this because people usually tend to either overestimate or underestimate the importance of a CPU in gaming PCs. And just like you wouldn't build a house starting from the roof, the CPU isn't the first thing to consider when building a gaming rig. It's the GPU that has been and always will be the most important piece of hardware for gaming, so it's best to pick a CPU after you've already decided on a graphics card. This way, you can make sure it's powerful powerful enough to push the GPU to its maximum potential. So we have to ask ourselves, can dual core processors still do this? Can they bring out the full potential of your GPU for gaming, despite the fact that newer games are optimized to exploit the higher core and thread counts of modern CPUs as much as possible? To answer this, we have to take a look at the selection of dual-core CPUs that we can work with. After all, there are many different types of dual-core processors that you can buy, but for this list, we'll stick to the ones that you can still buy new. The first of these is the AMD A series of processors. These come with integrated graphics and they're most commonly found in laptops and non-gaming PCs. This is their niche, and rightly so, as they're very ill-suited for gaming. Even the most powerful A-series processor will bottleneck a GTX 1050, so not only will they hinder the performance of any newer GPU, but they'll also produce large amounts of heat whenever you're gaming. Combine this with the fact that they still use the outdated FM2 socket, and it becomes clear that these processors shouldn't even be used as short-term solutions for gaming. Next we have Intel Celeron, and this is where the situation starts to get a lot brighter. These processors are very similar to the AMD A series in almost every regard, from price and performance all the way to their target demographic. But what makes them stand out is the fact that they use the LGA1151 socket, which is still in use even with the latest gen Intel processors. This makes Celeron a very good short-term solution, as it still leaves you with the possibility for future upgrades on the same motherboard. You just have to make sure that the chipset is compatible as well. Then we have the Intel Pentium. Once upon a time, these processors were considered beastly. And while nowadays they're only used as a bridge between budget and gaming CPUs, they still have both the Celeron and the A-Series handily beat in terms of performance. What's more, they also use the LG1151 socket. This makes Intel Pentium the only truly gaming-worthy dual-core processor left, although it's not the last entry on this list, and it's not the best one either. So what's the catch? We've just said that the Pentium CPUs are the best dual-core CPUs left, so what gives? Well, the thing that makes 7th generation of i3 CPUs so special is that they aren't true dual-cores. Instead, they use hyper-threading technology to make each physical core function as two logical cores, meaning that these processors essentially function as quad-cores. Intel had to abandon this approach with their 8th gen i3 processors in order to keep up with AMD's new Ryzen series, but these i3s were still truly something. They're easily the best processors on this list, and they use the LG1151 socket, so you're still free to upgrade to a better CPU later. But there's a catch. Their prices never really went down, so while yes, you won't find a better dual-core CPU out there, they cost almost as much as a new 8th gen i3 CPUs, and these are real quad cores. The only reason you should ever buy a 7th gen i3 over an 8th gen i3 is if you find them at a hefty discount or secondhand. And speaking of secondhand, there are a couple of things we want to say about this, so let's just roll the title. 
Buying secondhand CPUs can be a very tricky thing, so it's always better to just get a new one if you can. The biggest problem here is that they'll usually be out of warranty and there's no way to know what state the processor is in. For example, what good will the lower price be if you get a used one-year-old i3-7350K only to have it die within a month because the previous owner had been overclocking it like there's no tomorrow. We can only recommend getting them secondhand if it's from a reputable source like someone you know or someone with excellent online ratings. So is using a dual-core CPU still worth it for gaming? Unfortunately, we have to say no, at least in the majority of cases. They're still more than good enough for non-gamers, but current dual-core processors will only end up bottlenecking your GPU to varying extents, and it's only going to get worse from here on out. The only situations where we would suggest getting a dual-core CPU are either if you're only planning to get it as a temporary solution, or if you just can't afford anything more expensive. We'd suggest getting a Celeron if you're planning to upgrade soon anyway. It's the cheapest option that'll still leave you with room for improvement, and it should still allow beefier GPUs to run, just not as well as they could. On the other hand, if you're buying a dual core that you plan on using for a while, then it's probably better to opt for a Pentium for better performance. But you should definitely stick with Intel here, even if you can only afford a Celeron. The A series will run much hotter while giving you similar performance, and it will completely cut off your upgrade potential. So what do you think? Do you agree with us? Or do you think dual core CPUs still have some life in them for gaming? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and we really hope this video helped you if you were stuck in this dilemma. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.